Okay, time to move on with the Blue Moon campaign and take on Grit's second mission. And this one's another pre-deploy mission, so completing the lab won't help here. And this one gave me quite a bit of trouble the first time I ever played this game. In fact, it was one of the few missions I actually skipped altogether. But that was probably because, mainly, it's just very unconventional. It's not all that hard. Yeah, you just need to know how to approach it. Ah, oh, and as he's hinting here, yes, um, this is the first mission since that early introduction one where you'll be seeing cannons. And it's another Fog of War one. Ah, uh, yes, you missed his superpowers name, which leads me to think that she only studied his Advanced Wars 1 stats. Yes, um, remember back in Orange Star when it could only fire once every two turns? That was just to get you used to it. The real thing? Yes, can and will shoot every day. And of course, this is actually the first time um, Grid gets to face the main enemy of the Blue Moon campaign, Lash. And now he's explaining, yeah, this mission is quite different to normal ones. So, your goal here is to reach the headquarters at the top end of the map. And you have a pretty large army from the start, but as you'll notice, nowhere to create more units. So, once you lose these, that's it. But thankfully, it doesn't matter what type of unit reaches the headquarters. If anything gets there, you win. However, yes, as was mentioned in the opening dialogue, you can't let that headquarters be captured. So, good idea to destroy any enemy infantry that you encounter. Now, yeah, this mission is a little tricky until you figure out how to approach it, but the one thing you have to know is... Basically, the main strategy here can be summed up as always stay in the woods. That's pretty much... Essentially, yeah, just look at these cannons range. If you're in the woods, you are safe from cannon fire, because cannons can really fire at units they can see. Now, of course, remember that the AI isn't affected by fog of war and thus can see everywhere, but they still face the limitation that they can't see into woods unless there's something right next to it. And that's why... That's essentially your main reason to attack enemy units in this mission. Because if something spots you or if you get ambushed while you're in the woods, then the cannon is going to shoot at you in the enemy turn, unless you manage to kill the thing that spotted you. Now you can probably be a little bit uh, haphazard with your infantry, and of course remember that Grit's indirect units are much, much more valuable than his direct units, so... If you've got limited wood space, save it for the rockets and artillery, especially the rockets though. You need to keep those rockets hidden at all times, because they're really Grit's main trump card. And if they get shot by a cannon, you're really losing a big part of your power, so... It's best to keep them hidden. Of course, now what I mentioned before about, um being a bit more haphazard with your direct combat units. Try not to risk your recons though, because as you'll see, like one, there's a lot of roads here, so they've got quite good mobility, and the main reason though is because they're so fast, they're your main bet at quickly rushing into the headquarters in one turn. Now, 
yeah, I'll mention exactly your strategy for doing that later, but the AI is not really too smart. If they were smart, they'd put something on top of the headquarters, but they don't do that for some reason, because they're idiots. Probably best to load in between the APCs here. And yeah, you use your direct units mainly for vision, because of course, remember that um, indirect units, you know, despite having amazing firepower, have very short vision ranges. And that's really the main reason why um, all of Grit's Force missions in campaign mode are in Fog of War. Because it's really to kind of balance him. Because, actually, I should explain later. Now, yeah, this was the situation I was talking about before. Now, the cannons will only fire at the beginning of the enemy turn. So, if they find you during an enemy phase, you won't get shot at until the next turn. But in this case, one of my rockets and quite a few of my other units have been spotted. And this is very bad. It looks like get rid of these things. Right, so getting rid of that recon there means those three are now safe from cannon fire. And I just need to take out that tank ASAP. Otherwise my rockets are going to get shot at. Which we don't want. Of course, you might want to save a few units for... And be careful with these woods here, because very often you'll find enemies in them. And if you get ambushed... Yeah, you're going to be taking a big cannon shot to the face. Anyway, other than that, really not all that much to say about this mission, so I'll probably reserve some of the rest of this to just talking about grit in general, really. Yeah, grit is often accused of being one of the most overpowered characters in the game. Of course, yeah, um, I read a good coin somewhere that that's actually really saying something, considering um, that, you know, in Advance Wars, pretty much everyone can be described as overpowered in some way. So, being a game-breaker in this kind of game is... It's not so much hard to do, you just need to kind of form a different definition. Yes, of course, these infantry will get distracted by these cities up there and try to capture them which is annoying because it cuts down your vision range. Note how you can see into tiles um, with cities. Now, was it in Days of Ruin that they also um, actually lit up a few surrounding tiles? I'm not sure, but anyway. Owning cities, yeah, that's another major benefit in fog. Uh, another random thing I want to say here, um, yes, you can attack the cannons, but don't get distracted by it unless you really desperate and you really have to stop it shooting at you. Because destroying cannons doesn't count anything towards your rank whatsoever. I mean, frankly, it does look pretty cool blowing them up, but if you don't need to, don't do it. Ah, see, now that's what I was saying to watch out for. That's probably one of the most common pitfalls in this mission. If you just rush forward with everything, you're going to encounter that. And the cannon damage combined with being surrounded by enemy units means pretty much anything that ends up running into an ambush in the woods will be dead by the end of the turn. care about that infantry there, I just... Unfortunately, that tank is pretty much going to die. Anyway, the thing they say about Grit is, sure, his direct units may have an attack penalty, but really all they're there for is to be meat shields and lure enemies into range of his artillery. Yeah, which, of course, yeah, with all these artillery running around, Grit can get pretty crazy and not fall for. I will say he probably is balanced with Fog, but without it, you'll actually see later in the campaign just how valuable he can be. I mean, a lot of the missions that require you to choose your commander 
really benefit from you choosing red. Of course, one thing to remember here, of course, with that um, firepower penalty, is that, of course, Grit's anti-airs, I don't think they can, or at least they're not guaranteed to one-shot infantry. I mean, they probably still will, but they might not. I'm just doing that to be safe there. Of course, there still could be something in the response there. You just want to concentrate on advancing forward and staying hidden. And, although whenever you see an opportunity for a cheap kill, take it. That's really the main way you get the power ranking in this mission. Although, this really isn't one of those where you've got to go really out of your way to get power. Technique is not so bad in this mission because it's really sort of a stealth based one anyway, so you don't want to get detected and thus lose things. So yeah, pretty much stealth based mission describes this one pretty, pretty well. There aren't that many overall in the Advance Wars series actually, but this certainly qualifies. There's a certain other commander who'll be introduced later on whose abilities kind of lend themselves towards those kind of missions. But we'll be seeing them later in the campaign, and actually their missions are some of the most annoying in the game. Well, for me personally. Yeah, see, I can take a shot at the cannon there. I'm not sure it will really help me, though. Now, remember, there are some spaces, some blank spaces that are safe from cannon fire, but it's best not to take the chance. Ooh. Yeah. That one was close there. Oh, that, that was what I was worried about. I knew there'd be something in those woods. Okay, yeah, this is bad. Uh, do I have anything to shoot that? No. I think I'd best leave that tank there as a sacrifice and keep moving. No. Too stupid to do that. Better not. There's another tank there. That's probably the best move here. And that. Ooh, good. I thought there'd be something in those woods, but there isn't. You can really never tell here. I mean, it's not all that luck based, because usually if you do encounter something, you need to make sure that either the unit that's been spotted is of no overall importance to your plan, or that you can quickly take out whatever spotted it. Uh, the problem with these rockets is, yeah, they move really slowly. Of course, yeah, I probably haven't explained um, movement types in detail, really, but um, that's something you can look at on the status screens, but the main, really the only main movement type you need to know about uh, that affects things that greatly, apart from the infantry things, um, which I may talk about later, seeing as I have nothing better to do here, is tires. Oh, and I knew I'd get hit by something, but come on! Oh, of course, may let me set up a kill on a, that medium tank next turn. Although that's probably not good, because all that will accomplish is uh, fill up some of her power meter, which is not so good on a map that's just full of woods. We don't want those woods giving the same defense bonuses as a headquarters, do we? And giving an attack bonus as well. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking to myself before I started this that just about every map in the game, uh, well, in the campaign mode, where you're forced to use someone, will always the map will generally be one that favours the character you're using. You'll ve or, or at least you'll very rarely get a map that's really unsuited to be using. Like, for example, um, let's just say... Um, Having Eagle, well, who'll show up later, on a map with no airports, that'd be just completely stupid. Although he can do something in that situation, it's not like, um, it's not like Drake with no navy. Well, actually, Drake with no navy does have something he can do as well, but, um, anyway. Drake in an air battle is pretty bad, though. 
still, um, yeah, getting distracted here. But one thing I noticed about this map is, not only does the overall setup of the mission pretty much favour grid, but the map itself actually favours Lash quite heavily as well. As you'll notice with all the defensive terrain here. Oh, I was afraid that would happen. This is why you've got to be very careful when taking pot shots and things like this, because if you predict wrong and the thing survives, you guessed it, cannon's going to shoot you in the enemy turn. Right, thankfully, okay, we're coming pretty close to the headquarters now. Uh-oh. Okay, that's not good. Yeah, got to watch out for that. Make sure um, you keep your APCs alive. Because you really don't want to have. Yeah, always a good idea to check your opponent's power meter. Anyway, you really don't want to have the unit you've set up to make a run for the headquarters suddenly run out of fuel at the last minute. That would be very embarrassing. Alright, just get clear up. Ah! Yeah, see, that's the problem. Thankfully, this artillery chose to shoot the already doomed tank instead. Oh, and she's got another one. Great. Yeah, these big clump of woods here is where you've got to be the most careful. Oh, crap. Good thing that Rekin survived, I can retreat it. Probably. Well, hopefully. I've still got my two uh, medium tanks there. If I could somehow swap it with one of them. Ooh, ooh, 60% shot with a 6 HP medium tank. That's pretty good, except that it's going to fill up a power meter a so probably best to do this instead. Come on! Oh well, at least I'll be able to get this tank here. And kill the infantry. Yeah, that's probably quite good for power ranking there. I'm not really sure what the power requirements for this mission is. I mean, um, as I've said before, I never actually look up or walk through the list's actual power requirements. Unless I'm really desperate. Well, unless I have a lot of trouble. And there's only one mission uh, in all that I've um, recorded, which is actually 99% of the game, where I had to do that. One of the Green Earth ones. Mainly because it's one of the few where you've actually got to be... You've got to actually really think about your power ranking. There's not many missions where you've got to do that, well, at least on normal campaign. On hard, of course. Um, I haven't actually tried to get S ranks on hard mode yet, though. So, um... Speaking of which, I uh, might as well say it now, I'm not going to be recording a full playthrough of hard mode. I will, however, probably record the three missions in the Orange Star campaign that got completely changed in hard mode. Now, I don't mean as in different layout. I mean, the middle three missions in Orange Star actually get totally replaced with three completely new missions, which is something that hard mode just doesn't even do elsewhere. So I'll be showing those missions, hopefully with S ranks, but we'll see. Yeah, I remember hard mode in this game was, um, well, I finished it normally once, it was not that bad. And for some reason, oh, I'll say this later, but, um, I actually found the final mission to be easier on hard mode than it was on normal. I don't know why. But yeah, I do. I was I was just reading um, um, uh, something on the internet yesterday about the relative difficulty of the different hard modes in the series, and I never played the first Advance Wars, but I've read that its hard mode is completely insane. And one thing I can vouch for, however, is hard mode of... Oh, crap, she's got a super. Anyway, one thing I can vouch for is hard mode 
in Dual Strike. Yes, it's actually easier than normal. Mainly because you can choose any combination of characters for whatever missions you like. Which, if you want to be cheap, basically translates to every mission as Yay, Eagle and Sammy Blitz! Instant victory! Not really some of them, but you get the idea. I'm going to mention that when we get introduced to that combination, but let's just say one of the most broken teams in gaming history, I'd go so far as to say. Funnily enough, that's kind of a grid player's general playstyle. I mean, he's really good, but he's not that good at winning missions quickly. Which means um, that becomes a bit of a liability if you're trying to S rank all That's where Sammy's probably a bit better in that regard, but. Of course, Grid is still pretty amazing in multiplayer, and if you're just generally trying to win, if that's your only goal. But if you're trying to win fast, he's probably not your guy. Go with someone like um, Eagle or Sandy if that's your... Uh... Or if you're playing Dual Strike both and watch your opponents really start to hate you. Anyway, I've gone really off topic here, sorry. Um, that's because um, I couldn't really think of all that much to say about this mission apart from the general gimmicks and... Right, I do have a clear run to the HQ here. Oh, I better just smash the thing first. And yeah, despite the fact that Grid's got weak direct, don't underestimate his medium tanks. They're still pretty good. Yeah, well, let's just shoot the cannon. Just for the hell of it. It's not going to do anything, actually. That one did anything. I don't think they did anything. Anyway, right, that settles it, and my both of these I think have a clear run to the HQ. Just remember to look at the route they're going to take. Oh, I'm doing this just to reveal if there are any enemies in the path. None, so I have a clear run, and I will capitalize on that by doing that. There we go. That quote by Grim was incredibly awesome there. And well, it is after the next two missions, at least. Mission complete. And I believe the image that's showing the background here is unique to this mission. Oh, they do. They really do. <laughs> And funnily enough, I will be using Grid for the exact missions I describe as a million times tougher than that. But, right. Next up will be the lab.